we have clay objects from at least 30,000 years ago that are identifiably female. But also, like you, you said earlier, it's just you find certain things boring. And I think, why not go for whatever you find more stimulating? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's yeah. your time, it's your energy. Absolutely. It's just fascinating how you can give, you know, a pound of clay to 12 people and you'll get 15 different things. Mm -hmm. And I just find that absolutely, absolutely fascinating. But a lot of people say to me things like, oh, I can't draw, I'll never be able to draw, and things. And like, well, you could if you practice. If yes, you absolutely. were going to try and build a website, you'd have to practice or do it or learn. And it's exactly the same with creativity, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Hi, I'm Claire, founder of Creativity Found, a community for creative learners and educators, connecting adults who want to find a creative outlet with the artists and crafters who can help them do so, with workshops, courses, online events and kits. For this podcast, I chat with people who have found or re-found their creativity as adults. We'll explore their childhood experiences of the arts, discuss how they came to the artistic practices they now love, and consider the barriers they may have experienced between the two. We'll also explore what it is that people value and gain from their newfound artistic pursuits and how their creative lives enrich their practical, necessary, everyday lives. In this bonus episode, I'm joined by Creativity Found Collective member Kelly Druitt and friend of Creativity Found, Cara Lamoon, as we visit the pottery studio of fellow Collective member Debbie Page. Kelly lived in France, but was visiting the UK and, of course, we wanted to meet up for the first time in real life. Since Kelly could easily get a train from Bristol, where she was staying, to Reading, I knew I had the perfect location for us to meet and have a mini creativity catch-up. In this episode, you'll hear about how Debbie makes her moon jars and what they are, as well as a little pottery history, plus details of Debbie's teaching. We also start plotting our next creativity catch-up, featuring a few more members and their creative classes. So how do you build, right. Debbie? How do I build? I'm a hand builder, so I don't. I, I can throw, I teach throwing, I find throwing boring. <laughs> um, so I hand build, so that means I, I pinch clay, I coil clay. I also roll out slabs occasionally as well. What's coiling? Coiling is where you get a piece of clay and you roll it into a sausage. You mm -hmm. thin sausage. Oh, and then you can build yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to have a, have a feel? If you... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <I> instantly <laughs> Instantly people go, oh. oh. Some people refuse to take it, fair enough. But yeah. anyone who gets it is instantly squishing yeah, it yeah. they don't just go <laughs> they instantly squeeze it and there is something really fundamental about human beings manipulating what's in their hands mm. and this is easily manipulable yeah. so i'm trying to stop now i thought i was going to get turned off next. no no keep going. <laughs> keep going keep going so a coil of clay is mm. is is formed by i, I try to exp... this is this this sounds daft but we have clay objects from at least 30,000 years ago that are identifiably female. It isn't just a blob that someone's got, oh, there's a fingerprint there, they must have manipulated. They're called uh, the Venuses of Wichtendorf, sort of very, very Eastern Europe, Germany, Hungary sort of area. Um, and they're about so big big head, no face, obviously they can do faces, I can't do faces, I'm with them on that, but they've got hair, you can see they've got hair, big boobs, big pregnant belly. Mm -hmm. So obviously female, yeah. and there's, there's isn't just one. Even if we only had one, that wasn't that person's first rodeo on that piece of clay, they'd done it before because everything's in proportion. Mm -hmm. So 30,000 years ago, you know, you did have saber-toothed tigers and mammoths running around, even in Central Europe. You know, life expectancy, 30, 35. Mm. Um, and they had the time to look at a human body and go, dum, 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 right, and the head, and then the boobs, and then the belly, then the legs. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. And that's spine tingling stuff to me. But they didn't have tables. So they oh, could be the flat surfaces, yeah. They may have had an occasional flat rock, but it's still yeah. gonna be lumpy. So in Africa, they actually coil Yes. Just like like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> Natural. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's, you know, there is some, I don't know, whether you believe in sort of, you know, cultural memory and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, something really weird can happen when you give someone a piece of clay. Mm. It, it's the same, actually, if you give people a stick, mm -hmm. they will bend it, break off bits, twist it, pull off the bar. I mean, they're manipulating yeah. it yeah. Uh, as well. So it, it's not just clay, but, you know, clay is up there. So we... As a, these days, because we have tables as technology, which would freak people out. And say, hey, hey, table is a piece of technology. Um, so you just coil them out, and then, as you say, you, you put them into molds like that. You get them into two halves. Oh, so you use a mold? Yeah, I wouldn't just start sort of um, trying to make anything. A... I mean, this these this one here I've made. Um, I actually bothered to weigh them out so because I know someone would ask me. It was two pieces of clay weighing 160 grams each. I don't need a mould for that size because it fits my hand. Yeah. If I'm using clay of 250 grams per half, I need a mould because mm. my hands aren't big enough to control yeah. it. So it, it, it's size. Yeah. yeah. It's size. And then when you've, you've got your two halves and you stick them together and you, you blend across the, the jaw lines. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I do... To get rid of all those lumps, I mean, you can smooth it over with your fingers and a stick, and it takes forever. <laughs> but going back to my table technology, if I roll it gently, so you can see, if I roll it gently, you can see all the yes. all the lumps and bumps yeah. disappearing. Yes, yeah. disappearing. It is also um, compressing the clay. Clay works best when it's really squished. And although it would have been squished a bit when I was rolling it, squished a bit more when I was joining the sides. There's nothing like a bit more compression to really make it um, even stronger. And then, I made this yesterday evening, it would have been shrinking. Clay shrinks. Mm -hmm. And it means that although it's not airtight, the air pressure in there is a little higher than the air pressure out mm -hmm. here. So when I push, yeah. I can push a little harder mm -hmm. than if it was just a flat piece of clay. And I don't make as much denting. Oh. So I can use that and really, you know, get rid of all those naughty little lumps and bumps there that are happening. And then I can shape it. So, you know, my moon jars are round. Yeah. But they are... I, I'm not bothered if they're perfectly spherical. Yeah. Um, Something nice about yeah, non-uniformity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, Korea, the, the, the moon jars come originally from Korea. Do you want to have a... Yeah. Have a feel? Oh! It's a whole filled thing, which I know it isn't, but even so, it comes up lighter, and then actually, you can feel the movement yeah. In, yeah. A, yeah. in the ball of clay. Oh, yes! <laughs> <That's really laughs> <shocking. laughs> How funny! <laughs> it's what you expect and what it really is. That's like an Easter egg almost, that yes. kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Just passing a ball of clay around. <laughs> so the Koreans. Uh, have always been incredibly good potters and in about the 1650s they finally came out from underneath China's yoke and yeah. had a big renaissance of cultural craft arts and things and they devised ways of throwing porcelain pots that I can't put my arms around mm -hmm. bearing in mind there's a 20% shrinkage rate on porcelain so it would have been mm. even bigger they threw them in two halves and put them together and they've come up with three main shapes that are traditional spherical which for some reason this year my are more spherical than normal yeah I do and these you call the moon jars so these are called moon yeah. jars originally they were called wait for it big branding opportunity here in Korea big jars <laughs> <laughs> 1650s marketing didn't really kick in <laughs> later they started to be called moon because they were white and Koreans also have a, a cultural influence of the moon. The you know, moon's very important to them. And they... I understand that. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that. <laughs> so they're called moon jars, but they can be spherical. Teardrop speaks yeah. for itself. Oh, my favourite. Wobbly. 
How wobbly. Wobbly is an official shape. Uh, I mean, you know, I, that's brilliant. I, I, it's brilliant for two reasons. First, three, but well, two reasons. First of all, it means I can make moon jars and they're a bit wobbly there, still moon jars. Second, uh, a culture that allows for the fact yeah. that it's yeah the, not perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. has got to have a something going for it anyway. We just need to interject, and Carol is going to tell her what her tell us what her name is. My surname is Moon. <gasps> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to come today, didn't you? I did, I did. But you didn't even know, did you? I, I didn't know it was moon jars. No, no, it, no, it was pottery. <laughs> no, you only just got on just now oh. thinking, I know Carol's name is moon. <laughs> Serendipity, how wonderful. Or the moons. <laughs> the moons yeah. alive. The moons. Brilliant. Um, so you're not very good at getting that very no. long <laughs> in the air. No, this is the This is the, this is the, with, drop in clay this is the problem there. that you find. <laughs> they only go so long. You can make pretty much any shape you want from this. Mm -hmm. Because the air pressure is slightly higher inside, I could tap this into a cone. Mm -hmm. I could tap this into a square. Mm -hmm. If I had the inclination, the time, I could make a dodecahedron. Yeah. What's that? Twelve sided. Okay. <laughs> this sort of best thing, um, which I'm not going to do because that's you know boring. So you know it's it's a very adaptable technique, and I'm teaching this technique is the basis of. Well, it's um, obviously it's decorative. It could be a little moon jar. If you make it square, it can be a little pot. You can make, cut the top off and make it into a lid. You could top the thir top third off and make it into a cup. You can make it into a sort of teardrop shape, and that's really good for things like penguins mm. ah, yeah, and yes. birds and stuff. Yeah. Um, you could stick a handle here and a spout there and a lid there, yeah. and you've got a teapot. Yes. Um, it's a really adaptable starting point a shape, yeah. Yeah. Um, for for people to actually start when they're starting on their pottery world. Yeah. Pottery, life. pottery still looks down on hand builders. If you're a sculptor, they understand that. You know, you take bits of clay and you slap it on. But they do look down on pinch pots on coiling and stuff. But so when you actually, call yourself a potter, then that's on the wheel. And... Well, no, I call myself a potter because mm. I work with clay. Mm. I make pots. Yeah. You know, if you In take your... it back to its meaning, a potter mm. makes pots. Absolutely. Mm. But throwers... Uh, it's interesting. Many hand builders can throw a bit. Mm -hmm. Really good throwers can rarely hand build interesting it really is i mean i can remember going and seeing a very you know he's, he's a very famous potter called Matt, matthew blakey he did a brilliant project he went to every county he got funding to do this he went to every county in uh, the england and wales and took clay and made a pot and a glaze from that clay mm -hmm. put it in the victorian exhibition yeah. brilliant idea love yeah. it yeah and um he came to did a, do a talk about halfway through and he was telling us about this particular clay he found which was awful to throw with yeah. so I said well why don't you hand build it mm. and it, his face was like I'd asked him to kill his firstborn <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'm only suggesting another alternative making method mate. you know really just you know, lighten up he could have said well no I want them all thrown because then they're all thrown yeah, they're all hand, but, yeah comparable he, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was like really <laughs> And it's a real shame because this came first. Yeah, yeah. 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 This came at... first. Yeah. You know, throwing was invented about 5,000 years ago. Oh, and you wouldn't you. get those yeah. shapes for throwing at oh, all, you would. would you? You would. would, you? You, would. Okay. you would. And I could, I could get those you shapes. Do that. Yeah. I can get those shapes. That's not a problem. It's just how I choose not to work. It's the same way, mm. you know, you say you work occasionally in acrylics. You might use work something else. You'll go use something else. Mm. You know, our creative outlets outlets have to take different formats because mm, we're all different absolutely. people. Yeah. And mine is using clay without technology. I mean, I I have turned up to a demonstration and I'd forgotten my tools. Mm. All I had one week was my chopstick, <laughs> and I made teapots all day just using my chopstick. So you can make really technical, highly technical things with very, very little... I didn't even have to have the chopstick. You know, I could have made it without. But... Now we know why Debbie wears chopsticks in her hair. I, I, the <laughs> hair came first, not the... <laughs> not the pot. But also, like you, you said earlier, like 
it's just you find certain things boring. And I think, why not go for whatever you find more stimulating? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's yeah. your time, it's your energy. Absolutely. Mm, totally. Absolutely. Mm. It's just fascinating how you can give, you know, powder clay to 12 people and you'll get 15 different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just find that absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Even now, I've got a little bowl. Oh, we've got a little, little square. square. Oh, I put mine down. <laughs> what, what is that? Sorry. A sandwich. It's a, a baguette. It could be a sort of, you know, paper. I've, I've seen people try and, you know, a couple of hundred quid of yes, yeah, sculpture. Yes, it's, it's abstract. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Mm. I'm still learning how to work this stuff, and I've been playing with it since I was 13 years old. Okay, it's been gaps forever in the learning. Yeah. Forever learning. Mm. When I'm teaching, I get, I do get a little bit niggled when people want to be able to to master something straight away. Mm -hmm. They don't have the patience, you know. When I tell them it took me three years to learn to throw, and believe me, I was highly motivated mm -hmm. to learn to throw. I then went and did a City and Guilds diploma and came out a mould making hand builder. Yeah. <laughs> With craft and I'm sure art, paint paints and you know, brushes and pencils and things, you have to put the time in mm -hmm. yeah. mm. to get it back, don't mm. you? There is something about um I think sometimes people get uh, impatient because they don't enjoy the process. They don't enjoy the doing. And I think that is like either you have that interest or that it, it somehow stimulates you that you want to like continue yeah. doing it. Or if not, then yeah, it's not your thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. But then yeah. then don't make it wrong that you're not an expert after day one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But a lot of people say to me things like, oh, I can't draw, I'll never be able to draw, and things. And I'm like, well, you could, if you practice. If yes, you absolutely. were going to try and build a website, you'd have to practice or do it or learn. And it's exactly the same with creativity, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But the only thing we mm. never have to learn to do is to breathe. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's instinctive. Mm. We have to learn to walk, we have to learn to feed ourselves, we have to mm. learn to brush our teeth, comb our hair, mm. everything. We have to learn how to do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, give yourself a break sort of thing. I mean, I, when I'm teaching, I, I don't, if someone comes in and says, I want to throw, I, I, I get a bit strict and say, no, I want you to hand build first week. Mm. Mm. Um, because it's going to be six, seven weeks before you, you get anything that you mm. want to keep, or mm. that I'll want you to keep, put it that way. Because mm. <laughs> yeah. um, at least then they can take something home with them. Yes. Feel achievement. On week three or four. Yeah. Whereas they will not be taking anything home the yeah. first time if they're throwing. Mm -hmm. How often do you do the workshops? I, well, I teach regularly. Mm. Um, I teach at um, Woodley Hill House, which is part of Bratman Woking College. I teach in Reading uh, and I teach at East Hendred, uh, which is a little village just up here, 34 outside Oxford. Um, so, and they're sort of very general. There'll be some hand builders, there'll be some throwers in there, and of varying amounts of time. So for complete beginners to people who've been potting for 20 years. It's a whole range of, of interests and skills and uh, ma making methods. But then I do uh, one day workshops at a couple of different venues mm -hmm. and I do those sort of when I'm not doing my general term time stuff because the hours in the day basically, so holiday times. I'm going to try and get one to one of those workshops at some point. Well, I will. It's harder living in France, but if you're doing one well, there, day ones, there then... are potters in France that will do them, but they might just do them in French. Yeah, um, in second English. language is quite difficult. I'd get by, but um, anytime you've got anything technical, though, it, it must sort of make it. It's just less enjoyable because you're thinking yes. about the, the language as well. As well as the yeah. really. Yeah. Well, you put your um, one-off ones if when you're yeah. doing some in the holidays on the yeah. chat group and the membership, yeah. and then Kelly how will long are you here for? Uh, only until Tuesday. Oh right. Now. Okay, yeah. so I've got a, I've got a, yeah, I've got a fast. thing at um, Ardington on the twentieth of July. Mm -hmm. Can't remember what I'm doing. Might be teapots. Don't look at me. I don't know what you're doing, Debbie. I feel like I did read you doing a teapot one soon. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, we should try and tie it in with a printmaking with Jerry as well. Yes, you could exactly. Have like, if you have a creative yeah, week, uh, yeah. that would be amazing. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. Creativity for really teachers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks so much for listening to Creativity Found. If your podcast app has the facility, please leave a rating and review to help other people find us. On Instagram and Facebook, follow at Creativity Found Podcast. And on Pinterest, look for at Creativity Found. And finally, don't forget to check out creativityfound.co.uk, the website connecting adults who want to find a creative outlet with the artists and crafters who can help them tap into their creativity.